Good afternoon. We want to welcome you to the NAACP's Your Voice, Your Vote, Your Voice, Your Vote. And within our tradition, we never begin anything without prayer. So I'm going to very quickly say a prayer, then I'm going to introduce uh, the president of the Brockton NAACP, Phyllis Ellis. Bow your heads in prayer, please. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the assemblance of the people of God today. Lord, we ask that you bless this event. We ask that you bless those that are coming from the highways and the byways of this life. Lord, that they may register to vote so that their voice may be heard loud and clear. In the name of the Christ that I serve, we pray, amen. We began this journey with the Lombardo companies because uh, Mr. Lombardo and his family felt it to be extremely important uh, that we vote, extremely important that they provide a, an avenue for people to come out and to vote, and not only for them to come out and vote, but also to have an opportunity to be community uh, through a drive-in movie. Uh, so we appreciate them and the work that they're doing in collaboration with the NAACP under the leadership of Phyllis Ellis. So at this time, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce Phyllis Ellis, our president. Thank you, Tony. I will keep my mask on. I also would like to thank Dave Lombardi for letting us host this event here today. He has been exceptional in planning this event. Also to Burns and Levinson and the Lawyers for Civil Rights. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why is voting important? Participation in elections is one of the key freedoms of American life. No matter what you believe or whom you support, it is important to exercise your rights. Some of the reasons why you should vote? Elections have consequences. Not voting is giving up your voice. Voting is an opportunity for change, and the community depends on you. Voting is your civic duty. Too many people take it for granted. Brockton has a population of almost 100,000 people, but in 2019, we only had 57,000 registered voters. And out of those registered voters, we had low voter turnout. If you are a registered voter, you need to exercise your right and go to the polls. It's unacceptable that people are registered to vote and they do not vote. Mm. On a personal note, on a personal note, let me get emotional here. <laughs> I find it unacceptable for people who can vote and don't. As a black woman, I know the sacrifices that were made in order for people like me to vote. They marched in Selma, Alabama for our constitutional right. These people were marching for me. So when I see people not voting, it's like a slap in the face. Ooh. People need to vote. I heard young people do not want to vote in this election because they, they don't think, you know, it's good for them. All right? They need to look at us, the elderly people, read their history, get involved, see what the politicians are about. It has to be one thing that one politician say that they like, all right? All they need is one reason to vote, but to stay at home and not vote is totally unacceptable. Voting is power, and when you do not vote, you give that power to someone else to make decisions for you. Don't let that happen. Please, vote. Thank you. I think, think, I think my president may have walked away with my phone. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. So we have uh, tremendous speakers here tonight. I'm going to introduce them as they come up. So I first want to tell you about a young, powerful speaker, a young woman that is uh, the chair of our WIND committee, uh, Courtney Henderson. Now, Courtney and I began a journey, actually, uh, a, a, a professional journey when I ran for mayor of Brockton. And she yelled at me a whole lot, uh, <laughs> keeping me straight. So I'm going to tell you, she is not only capable, uh, but she's the future of America. And so we don't, we don't limit you to the Commonwealth, and we don't limit you to office. She's our future, and we appreciate the fact that she's going to come up and give us some very good words and instruction on why voting is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, Courtney Henderson. Thank you, Tony. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay. The battles fought 
and the paths walked for our right to vote has not been a pretty one. History has showed us that we, are looked, that we were looked at as second-class citizens, that we were inferior and incompetent. Mm -hmm. The thought of African American being educated was distasteful, and the idea of African Americans having the right to vote was completely blasphemous. Jim Crow laws were put in place to keep African Americans from voting, and these very same laws that were enforced, like guessing how many jelly beans were in a jar and a literacy test, which remind you, we were not allowed to learn or read, were the very same laws that white Americans would not be able to pass. When Jim Crow laws were no longer effective, they resulted in violence. Fast forwarding to the 1960s, we are reminded that we were still fighting for our rights. There were marches, sit-ins, boycotts, protests, and everything else in between that were used to get us to the 1965 Voting Rights Act. History is repeating itself. We see gerrymandering, redistricting, voter ID laws, mass incarceration, which are disproportionately to our population. Um, the several closing of polling locations in rural South. These are threats to our right to vote. I have learned early on that when someone tries to stop you from accomplishing something, those are the very same things that you should be striving and targeting for. This is why I encourage you to vote and be an informed citizen. It is not enough just to show up to the polls, but take the time to learn about every candidate that is on the ballot, every policy, because these very policies are the ones that affect your family directly. It is not just the presidential elections that you should be voting in, it's the local ones, because these are the ones that are more effective. <clears throat> and after every election, you should hold your politicians and your elected officials accountable. You have voted them in, and you must let them know that you can vote them out. Why don't we give Courtney Henderson another hand clap? Give her a hand clap. Didn't I tell you all she was serious? Good job, Courtney. Thank you for giving us that speech. And again, voting is very important. Uh, although I don't know her personally, I've heard a lot about attorney Sophia Hall of the Lawyers for Civil Rights in Boston, uh, a committee that has never ceased to look out for the civil rights of all Americans, and specifically uh, black Americans. The work that Sophia has done with respect to immigration law is second to none in the country. Uh, so when she gets up here, you give her a round of applause because she represents what America is today. Ladies and gentlemen, attorney Sophia Hall. Good afternoon. I want to say, I want to give a big thank you to the Boston, excuse me, the Brockton NAACP chapter and all the organizers tonight. Uh, I'm here today on behalf of the Lawyers for Civil Rights. We are honored to stand in solidarity with this community as we talk about the importance of voting. Um, and I'm honored and privileged to be here today to talk a little bit about that right from a personal and a professional level. So I'm a supervising attorney at Lawyers for Civil Rights. Lawyers for Civil Rights is a nonprofit law firm that works for free for black, brown, and immigrant people to ensure that they have their rights and they have the representation they need when they experience discrimination at work, at home, when driving down the street. As a civil rights attorney, what I know is that voting is the crown jewel of all civil rights. that the right to vote is under attack. Mm. We saw it in the Supreme Court decision of Shelby. We see it when we see the implementation of voter ID laws. We see it when we see the implementation of purges. And if for one moment you think that Massachusetts is immune, uh -oh. I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. Uh -oh. At Lawyers for Civil Rights, we engage in litigation and advocacy right here in your own backyard to protect the right to vote for people that look like you and I. 
We file legal challenges against the Commonwealth when they implement systems that they know dilutes the right to vote for black and brown communities, when they maintain systemic barriers that ensure that we cannot have representation that looks like us, that understands and has experienced our lived experiences. We advocate at the State House when we recognize that we live in a state that has failed to modernize its laws past any other for many years. COVID has been a blessing and a curse. It's given the Commonwealth an opportunity to be better and to do better. We very recently just passed the very first mail-in legislation for voting that we have ever had in this state. We should have done that sooner. It should not have taken a pandemic. It should not taken, have taken a demand that we choose between our health and our right to vote to have a Commonwealth recognize that voting should be as easy as breathing. But it did. And for those people who ask themselves, you know, why should I vote? Does it matter? Let me ask you this. If your vote didn't matter, would they be trying so hard to stop you from being able to cast it? Some of the things that I think it's critical for our community to know that this new legislation at the State House has done, this new election law has done, one, it's extended our registration deadline. So in Massachusetts, we have not yet passed same day or election day registration, meaning you can't walk into the polls on election day and vote as you should be able to. In Massachusetts, our registration deadline is 20 days before the election. With the new passage of legislation, it's now 10 days. That gives people more opportunities while taking care of their babies, going to work, having to take care of all of the obligations that we know that we do to still be able to register to vote. We have also recently passed automatic voter registration. What that means is now when you go to a social service organization or the RMV, you are automatically registered to vote rather than having to request to register to vote. Those are all new changes that the Commonwealth has made just in the last two years. In addition to our mail-in voting, which at this point, I hope that for the primary election on September 1st, on Tuesday, everyone has had an opportunity to request a ballot and had an opportunity to fill out that ballot and mail it in. But if you have not, do not fear. You still have an opportunity to take your ballot, whether you've mailed it or not, and drop it off at your clerk's office, your city or town hall in the town that you live in. You can also look for a drop box that the city has set up to be able to enter your right to vote through the mail-in process. Those drop boxes can all be found on the election, the state election website. You also have the right, despite requesting an application, or excuse me, a ballot, to go into your polling site on election day and vote in person. I hope that people have taken advantage of early voting, which we've had during the primary, which ended this past Friday which gave people more days and more opportunities to get to vote. We will also see that again in November. One thing I do, however, want to be very clear about is that there is still a barrier to vote right here in the Commonwealth. Despite all of these changes, one of the things that we need to be on the lookout for as a community is we need to ensure that our voting places are where we expect them to be. Social science research shows that people of color are more likely to engage in in-person voting rather than mail-in voting, right, yeah. even when the opportunity exists. So what does that mean? What it means is that black and brown folks are gonna likely go out and vote in person on election day in November. We need to make sure that our polling centers are not arbitrarily closed or diminished because we have a state that does not recognize our lived experience. We cannot allow them to remove voting centers, polling centers, from our communities, from our backyards where we plan to go and vote. The law requires every city and town to do an analysis about whether or not there would be a disparate impact, whether or not people of color would be disproportionately impacted if they were to consolidate or remove polling centers. That information has to come in 20 days before the election. Everybody needs to be paying attention because we need to make sure that these polling centers stay in our communities, that we still have access and the right to vote. One more thing I'm gonna ask you to do. So not just vote and not just pay attention. I'm also gonna ask you to be aware that 
There is a program called Massachusetts Election Protection, which Lawyers for Civil Rights spearheads. It's a nonpartisan voter protection program, and I hope that every single person out there knows that if you need help on voting day, you can call 1-866-OUR-VOTE, and we will have more than 500 volunteers standing by to help you in real time to ensure that you can cast a meaningful ballot. If you are fortunate enough to have the opportunity to vote before the election day and would like to volunteer with that program, please contact Sophia Hall at www.lawyersforcivilrights.org and I would be happy to have you as a volunteer. We all have to stand together in community to protect this right that so many died for before us, and we can't do it without all of you. Thank you. Give her, what else? Give her, please give her a big applause. I want you to grab that. So one of the things that you just said that a lot of people don't know, because we often talk about the Commonwealth as being liberal and Democrat, but you just said that there are issues here. What would you change differently if you if you could change anything immediately? What would you change differently? I would. No, that's a okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'd immediately pass a law in the state so that we have same day election day registration. Meaning, you could go into a polling center on the day that you would wow. like to vote and register to vote. There should be absolutely no burden and no barriers for every single person who's eligible to cast their vote. There isn't for paying your taxes. There isn't for any of the other things that the Commonwealth schools as priorities, voting should be exactly the same. One, one more, and you also explained to us something about a, this 20, 20 days prior to the election, there's supposed to be some sort of reconciliation process. So let me ask you something specific to Brockton uh, that I've heard. When there is a person in the line at 8 p.m., or two people in the line at 8 p.m., some wards close and say, no, you can't vote. Is that legal? That is absolutely illegal. In Massachusetts, you are legally required to be open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. And at 8 p.m., so long as you are in the line, you are legally entitled to vote. They have to stay open till the very last person in that line votes, and they have to give every single person a minimum of five minutes to be able to cast their vote. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophia Hall, thank you so much. God bless you. Wow. She gave us some very good information. Uh, we salute you, uh, Counselor, and we salute you, um, uh, Courtney, because you all have just blessed us. So what we're going to do right now, we're just going to go into admissions, I guess that's what they're called. Uh, we'll be back to the microphone in about 10 minutes. Thank you. We have Brockton City Council at large, Moses Rodriguez. Moses, welcome. Listen, what brings you here today besides the fact that you are running for state senate? That's not the reason why ah, I'm here. Got him, got him. That's not the reason why I'm here. Tell us why you're here. I am here because this is a worthy cause. No matter what happens on Tuesday, yeah. we need to do what we can to get minorities involved in this, in the, uh, in this uh, system of uh, government that governs this country. We cannot sit here and demand changes, demand equality, demand treatment when we're not willing to put up, you know, to put up what we need to do to make sure that our people are represented at the highest levels in this country, represented in ways that we have never been represented before, because our needs continue to get worse and worse and worse. And we as people, especially people of color in this country, we got to do something in terms of demanding our rights, demand our equality. We cannot continue to struggle the way we've always struggled in terms of uh, getting anything, anything done for us. It seems like everything has to be a battle. You know, we have to fight for every single thing. And in 2020, I think that, you know, we actually had passed that period. Yeah. But it seems you that. You would have thought. Would have yeah. thought. Yeah. But it seems that we haven't gotten there yet. And it has to, it continues to be a struggle. Uh, one of my greatest, um, one of my greatest times was uh, two years ago when I was in Atlanta and I actually met, uh, I met John Lewis in Atlanta and I spent uh, probably a good 15, 20 minutes talking to the guy and he sat there telling me all the stories of the, the struggles that they went through. And when you look at some of, the, some of the things that we complain about, you know, we make such a big deal because somebody said this, this and this and this to us, and where, where these young people uh, middle-aged people, older Americans at the time were going through the struggles that they were going through. 
You know, you can't eat in the same counters of, as others. You can't use the same bathrooms as others. You know, those are the things that, you know, it, it gives you pause in the sense, right. you know? Right. So I actually have a couple pictures that I took with the guy down there that somebody sent me. And it was, a, it was a wonderful experience, and it shows you how, you know, how unimportant some of us are in mm -hmm. this whole struggle, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why we, uh, we must continue to do this for the good of this country. So Moses, I've crisscrossed the Commonwealth, and one of the main concerns that I've heard from young adults is that they have no intention of voting. A uh, part of what the NAACP is doing here today is to make sure that people are, are registered. But if young adults are pushing back on the system saying that they're not gonna vote, what is your answer to that? Listen, um, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Too many of us died for this right. You know, too many of us struggled to make sure that we put an X or, or fill out the little bubble in those, on, those, uh, on those ballots in the sense. Please do not do that. I mean, you don't have to vote for me if you don't want to vote for me, but vote. Just show up, take out a blank ballot, put it in, but show up and basically cast your vote. You cannot be happy with what's going on in Washington nowadays. If you're a person of color, if you're someone of color in this country, you cannot begin to be happy with what goes on in Washington. You know, we're not treated as human beings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we see every day what happens when one of us um, are pulled over by the police, mm -hmm. shot by the police in some instances, and it doesn't really matter if we are, if we are armed, unarmed, whatever the situation is. Now we're getting shot in the back several times. Seven times, right. Several right. times right, just right. because of who we are. Right, right. And then somebody that actually shoots someone right. with an AR-15 can march up up and down and be, the street and, be, and actually be and, rewarded and be rewarded yeah, right. here's a here's a bottle of water and stuff so mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we're going through you know we've got politicians that actually have benefited from their um, you know for, for just for the fact that they happen to be of a different color right you know they get away with murder nothing ha is held against them in the sense they can do whatever they want they treat it with all the dignity and respect that they uh, that they get not necessarily that they deserve mm -hmm. but only because they come from a privileged color that the rest of us don't have we have Pedro de Jesus let me tell you something a little about this guy is an aggressive guy when it comes to making sure numbers are done and what numbers is we're talking about that your family is counted in the United States census I'm going to interview you Pedro Pedro welcome to the NAAC this NAACP function but you are a member and you are a, actually a frequent flyer to most of our meetings so we love you and we appreciate you and we also he did renew by the way so make sure you guys renew Pedro why is the census important so it's important for the city of Brockton. So we get all the money and funding that we get from the federal government based on the population. So with the city of Brockton, they have more than 100,000 population that we know that we have. Not only we get money, we got the fair representation mm. in the state and the fair representation in Congress. When you talk about the funding, people were saying that uh, the state's given us en enough. The uh, taxpayers are doing enough. Why, again, it's so important that the federal numbers, that the federal census gets completed by each and every family. And what do you say to our immigrants who say it's not safe to fill out the forms? Now, for example, it's safe to fill the form. That's the reason we are here. We got uh, one of the questionnaires, et cetera. People, we don't ask people for any identification. We don't have for uh, social. No, wait a minute, Pedro. You said no identification. No. Okay. No identification. We don't have for social security. We don't have for nothing that can identify the people. Only what we need is the number, the number of people that live in that particular house, the you know the day of birth, and that's it. Important because all these federal program, all these local program affect the city. And the more residents that we have in the city of Brockton the more money that we get in federal funding, for example, for the school department, for firefighter, for hospital, for the infrastructure of the city. So, but today what you've done is you brought the, the census to us. Tell us a little bit about your, the staff that you've brought here and what is the goal? Well, the goal that we are here, we got two of the, my assistant here in the city of Brockton, that we are on the spot, we are on the spot uh, checking people the census. So the one day it only take 10, 15 minutes to complete the census, mm -hmm. and they got the tablet, and they can complete the census right now. They don't have to wait for the numerator to go over his house. Wow. What, what Pedro has done is he's brought his staff down here to make sure that the census is completed on the spot. They've gotten iPads, and they're all hooked up to maximize the technology. No excuse for the census not being completed. Pedro, we're a little concerned, though. We understand that the President of the United States has backed out of the uh, date. Tell us, what is the new date for the completion of the census? 
So the new day that is a September 30th. Uh, so that's the reason we got the people, the questionnaire assistance center through the city and different cities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that people get now, and a lot of people, city of Boston, Chelsea, Revere, Fort River, New Bedford, they are doing, they open the questionnaire assistance center, people feel more comfortable to go into these organizations. So what Pedro is explaining, and I think that some, maybe some of the work that's going to be done in the city of Brockton, the centers are actually opening up so people will be able to come in and use laptops, iPads, desktops in order to complete the census. Always mindful of the fact that we're still in a pandemic, uh, COVID-19, but we love the fact that the census, with respect to the Brockton area, has brought it to us here at the NAACP. Pedro, we want to salute you for the great work that you're doing. I know you, you can't comment on the change of the date, but uh, we appreciate you work well done ladies and gentlemen again thank you for tuning in to the work that we're doing we want to thank you for joining the NAACP your voice your vote tell us why is voting so important oh you can take it yeah thank you I'll just yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here today. You know, just last week we were celebrating women's 100 years. So, women's suffrage. Exactly, yep. women's suffrage. And to know that I'm here today, that I'm not, I just didn't get an opportunity to really vote, but also to become an elected official, it's really major. And uh, when they say that women were given their right to vote, I think that's wrong because we fought for our right to vote. You fought for it, yeah. So if we fought for something this hard and women literally gave their life so people could be here today to vote. So I think it's very, very important. I'm so glad that NAACP took this initiative to really be here today and to encourage people to go out there and vote because this is how we, we democracy, this is how we speak up, this is how we really let people know what we want, what is best for our country and this is the only way. So thank you so much for bringing this awareness. This is a great event. I'm so loving it to be here. No, thank you for being So we've been asking folks, one of the things that we we found out is that the young adults are saying that they're not going to vote, they're not going to uh, participate in a political process because they think it doesn't work. What do you say to those young, what do you say to those young adults? Especially in Brockton, we see uh, elections coming very closely. Right. People either winning or losing by one vote, by ten votes, by very closely. So every vote counts and every vo vote is important. So unfortunately, I met those people too. When I'm door knocking, when right. I'm out right. there talking to them. It's a real concern. It is a real concern. And they don't think their voice really matters. Maybe they don't think people will hear them. But when we are here and when we tell them, we are here to listen to you, listen to your concerns. How can I help you? I think that will change once we as elected officials go out there and reach out to those people and say we are here, we're listening to you. Let us know what we can do because that's our job. It's really public servant. Being out there in the public and letting people know that we're here standing up with them. Even if it's during a protest, just being there or in a vigil and prayer, we're there with them and that's our job. We have to stand up by our own people, what they believe and fight for our rights. That's why we're here today. Thank you so much. So you heard uh, uh, Councilor Mendez says that basically we're here for the people. We're here to fight for what they want. Councilor Rita Mendez, City of Brockton, Council at Large, we thank you for joining us here at the NAACP. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Phyllis Ellis, the president of the Brockton NAACP. Phyllis has been a tremendous leader, a tremendous civil rights leader in the city. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you don't know, Look at some of the articles from the Brockton Enterprise. She doesn't mince her words and she gets things done. She's, she, I don't know if you guys remember the uh, interview or at least the um, advertisement they were doing during the Clinton administration when they said, who do you want to pick up the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning? This is who you want to pick up the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning when it comes to civil rights. Phyllis, you're, you and uh, Nikki are leading the charge today with respect to your voice, your vote. Tell us, why is voting so important? Voting. <laughs> Need I tell you how important voting is? On a personal level, as a black woman, I sympathize with all those voters who marched in Selma, Alabama in 1965. They were fighting for us. They were fighting for people like me. So when I see people who say they do not want to vote, it just makes my blood boil, okay? Because voting is power. And when you do not vote, that power is taken away from you and given to someone else. They make the decision for you. And we don't want that. I have heard that young people do not want to vote in this election. Why not? 
What's wrong with the young people? They are our next generation. They need to come to the table. They need to do their part in voting for people. Come out, vote. Let us know what your issues are. If you don't know what the issues are, get involved. Read the newspaper. Talk to the politicians. But to sit at home and sit out and voting, that is not right. And we, uh, we do not want that. Well, well, President Ellis, let's be fair about this now. You, first of all, you've increased the number of young adults that are participating in this for the kids. You, 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 you have uh, uh, increased the number of young adults that are participating in NAACP. Uh, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm part of this uh, uh, speaking tour with Black Lives Matter. I talk to these young adults, 18 to 24. They're not voting. They're not voting. They're saying that, hey, the system has never worked. Our system is the old system. What do you say directly to those sorts of remarks? When I hear someone say the system is not working, look at us. We are the proof that it is working. If it was not for people like us in our age bracket, they wouldn't even be here to have the right to vote. So when they talk about they don't want to vote, I mean, that is total nonsense. They need to talk to the elderly people. They need to go back in time. They need to research what voting is all about and see why we are standing here today. Young people, please register, vote. We need you, your vote matters. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it from Phyllis Ellis, your votes matters. She's saying that there's a lot of oral history around some of our more mature adults here in the city of Rockland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, I, I didn't say elder, we said the mature adults, and we, so, so, so we get it, but she's answered the questions, and she's leading us forward with respect to making sure that we all participate in the vote. Thank you again for joining us on this segment of the NAACP. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mayor Bob Sullivan from the city of Rockland that has joined us here. Your voice, your vote, NAACP program that we're running here in Lovato. I'm just kind of, as you can hear my mask, I might pull it down a little bit. Mayor, thank you, thank you. So Mayor Sullivan joins us at all of our events, is very helpful in getting out, make sure that voters are getting out to vote. But not only that, Mayor, you've been kicking off a pretty huge campaign around the census. But let's talk a little bit about voting. Tell them why it's so important. Well, first of all, I want to thank the bishop. He's an elected official himself. Uh, he's the Brockton representative. There's two representatives uh, serving the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School. And I want to thank you, Bishop, for everything you do for the boys and girls of Southeastern. Um, it's extremely important. Every vote count, every vote matters. That's what it's all about. The census is extremely important due to the fact that the funding formula for the city of Brockton is based upon an accurate representation of how many people actually live in the city. We all know it's over 100,000, absolutely. But on the books right now, it's 95,000. So we're not getting the fair share of money from the federal government that we really are entitled to. So we need to, everybody that lives in the city of Brockton needs to just take a moment and either do it online, you can call in, or do the old fashioned way mail. It's been extended until October. And your vote matters. And I just want to say right now on behalf of uh, everybody in the city of Brockton. I want to thank President Phyllis Ellis. I want to thank uh, Bishop Tony Branch and the chapter, Brockton chapter the NAACP. They're out there working diligently right now, not just for social justice, long overdue, but to make sure that people vote. Vote, vote, vote. Because if you don't vote, you don't really have uh, a say in who's going to be serving you on the local level, on the state level, on the national level, on the county level. So again, my grandmother came to Brockton from Ireland and the three most important things she would always say is she would pray daily, she loved her family, and she would always vote. So I'm humbly asking you, please vote because your vote's gonna make a difference, not for us, but for the future generation, the boys and girls that live in the city of Brockton. So I wanna thank you, Bishop, for what you do, your public service. I wanna thank President Ellis for everything she does. And I just wanna thank you uh, in considering voting. And also, if you haven't done the census, please do. It's gonna matter. Thank you. So let me, Mayor, before you go, and I know today's the mayor's anniversary, so we gotta get him out of here. But before you go, so listen, you know that clearly you're in, you've been in charge of providing leadership. Huge protests in Brockton um, with respect to racial equality, police practices. I spoke to a lot of folks across this Commonwealth, especially a lot of young adults. They're saying they're not voting. What do you say to them? I would think that your vote right now is the most important vote. Most important vote. Now, I'm a Democrat, but if you're a Republican, unenrolled, independent, whatever, go to the polls. But this could be a historic vote, historic. A hundred years ago, right, a hundred years ago was the women's suffrage movement. And you know this, Bishop. When we got the 19th Amendment on the books, that spoke volumes. Right now, we can elect 
a woman of color to be vice president of the United States of America, Senator Kamala Harris. But what I'm trying to say right now is we need change. And the only way that we are going to have change, we, and the key word is we, together, is to make sure that we elect the right people in office that are going to serve us. That's it. They represent us. They're public servants. It's my honor and privilege to be the mayor of the city of Brockton. I know Bishop really uh, also has an honor and privilege to serve Southeastern Regional. But together, and the key word is together, we're going to create a really wonderful future. But if you don't go to the polls and cast your vote, you're not doing your job. So I'm humbly asking you, please vote young and old, white and black, gay and straight. Please, please, please vote because it's going to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Robert Sullivan of the city of Brockton, I believe the, the tag today is you're not doing your job if you don't vote. Thank you for joining us here at the NAACP. Your voice, your vote. Do I look okay? You look, you look great, <laughs> Mr. Lombardo. We could not do this work without the Lombardo family. Their community philanthropy with respect to South of Boston cannot be matched. So we appreciate Dave Lombardo. I'm just going to ask you to give a few words on why your family is supporting this. And most importantly, what do you think about getting these young people out to vote? Thank you so much, Bishop. Um, well, it's easy to support the community. It's something my family's been doing for 92 years. Amen. Uh, and so when George Floyd was murdered, we knew that as a company, we needed to stand on the right side of history. We needed to reach out to the community that's suffering and support and lend a hand. So I called my good friend Phyllis, who is near and dear to my heart, and I said, we are here for you. We do not have all the answers. We do not have all the questions, but we're going to answer them. We're going to ask them when we know them. So lean on us, use us in any capacity. We are here to support. We are here to give back. We're here to help make a difference and make some change. And that's where we started. And that's what brought us here today. Um, and we created an amazing event utilizing um, what this pandemic has done to our business, which is mm. devastated. And, and we pivoted to a drive-in movie theater and we thought what a better way to get people out to vote um, than to bring them here in an outdoor, safe and responsible environment uh, to be able to vote and then watch such an important movie in our history as something like Selma, it's such a moment in our history. Um, young people, old people, everybody needs to get out and vote and make a difference and make a change, especially this year. Um, it's so important for all of our young voices to be heard, and it's important for us to really make an impact and make a change in the way that our world is moving. And so we extend our parking lot, we extend our building, we extend our family's philanthropy and support uh, to try to make some difference in the world and hopefully today works out. So if you're not here now, I don't know if this is live, but get here, register to vote, get out to the polls, support the community. Let's make a difference, everybody. And thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So often in our community, we talk about uh, supporting businesses that are supporting our community. And often enough, we, we, we constantly try to connect it. Well, make sure that it's a, 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 a minority business, make sure, which is true. We want to enrich ourselves. We want to make sure social justice is presented uh, from our business models. But let me tell you something, the Lobato family uh, has supported our community. Uh, and that's something that we will not forget. So clearly this is a venue that um, has done some great work. I, I, during my years of sin, I know the apostles over there, uh, during my years of sin, uh, I hanged uh, out some <clears throat> called Vince's Night Club. And uh, so, <laughs> so, so our community is actually very familiar uh, with your, with your uh, family and your business model and the great work that you're doing. So God bless you for that. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, interview uh, our chair, Nishanda, who has done except She wants, it's her anniversary. She doesn't want to come on the mic. But please come and give us a few words. Dave, thank you so much. God bless you. Nishanda Ellis, come on up here. <laughs> she told me she didn't have a speech, but she is Phyllis's daughter, so we know you're ready. <laughs> well, good evening. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate you coming out on this Sunday afternoon. 
We're hoping for some more folks to come out and get registered and fill out their census. Um, and we look forward to seeing more of those folks come out. And we appreciate the folks that have come out. We've had a few come and do some voter registration, fill out some census. We've got some great giveaways to give out as well. Yeah, um, so there's a lot of freebies. Um, so come on down and um, spend the rest of the evening with us. We'll be here probably till about 9 because the movie's going to start around 7, 7.30. So we'll be out here for a while. Um, it's very important, of course, for you to register to vote because if you don't vote, you have no voice and you have nothing to complain about. So, you need to vote. And if you don't, then you just might as well be quiet. There you go. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. <laughs> now, now, now you all can understand why she's the chair of this event. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Nikki has done some great work. Uh, her Zoom calls, her, her notes, <laughs> uh, the minutes have been exceptional. So we appreciate the leadership that you've provided uh, uh, to us. Uh, and she's, you know, Nikki actually has kept us well organized. Uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, at this time, we're going to just have our president closes out, at least close out the uh, electronic portion of this because we uh, have our BCA uh, staff person who has done great work. Can we get BCA a hand clap? Yay! Can we get Miles a hand clap? Yes! Phyllis Ellis. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. You're, You're an awesome MC as always. Again, I would like to thank Lombardo's because without his help, this could not have been possible. Amen, amen. And for our wonderful committee, shared by Nishonda Ellis, she was great, well organized. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> to our great speakers, man, we learned a lot today. So, people, to the volunteers, the volunteers. We had volunteers come out to help with this event. This is actually in the in the um, era of COVID. This was a perfect event. You know, if you're uh, worried about social distancing, this is in a parking lot. You could drive up and not even leave your car. You know, you can come out and hear the speakers. They were great speakers without even leaving your car. You had snacks, had great people here. So uh, voting is important. This event was great. I wish more people had come out. If you didn't come out, you missed a great event, a great, great voting registration census event. But I want to thank everyone for coming out. I really appreciate your support. And that is that. Tony. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude our program. And whatever you do moving forward, in the words of John Lewis, get in some good trouble. God bless you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.